This is the Apple Watch Ultra, which is basically a supercomputer strapped to your wrist. Now, this is the Garmin Phoenix 7X Sapphire Solar, one of the world's best fitness watches, and a watch that I keep hearing is the Apple Watch Ultra of the Android world. But is that true? Now, after 30 days of wearing both of these watches, looks really weird, I need to send one of them back before the returns window closes. So in this video, I want to share with you which one of these two watches is the best all-round watch, and that's one that's good for fitness, for smartwatch integration, and I guess a little bit of telling the time too. I'm going to run you through what I like about these watches, the things I don't like, and answer the ultimate question of is the Garmin watch good enough to replace my Apple Watch Ultra and complete my switch from iPhone to Android. Now we all know the Apple Watch, it's bright AMOLED screen and all of the cool stuff that you can do with it. We know the Galaxy watches and the Pixel watches, but not many know about these Garmin watches, which are quite different to anything else that I've used before. And for me, these Garmin watches are what smart watches would look like if Apple hadn't created the Apple Watch. Now instead of an OLED screen, you get a memory in Pixel display, which displays a ton of information that you can control. And it's mostly controlled by using the buttons around the side. Now there is a menu button, which doubles as an up button a down button, a button for start and stop, a back button, and there is this button at the top that turns on the torch, but more of that in a second. So there are a lot of buttons. Now it's also solar powered. So when you're outside and in direct sunlight, you can actually feed energy back into the watch to help its very impressive battery life. Now it still integrates with your phone to pull notifications and messages, but there is no LTE. And honestly, this is a great watch. Like I've been really enjoying using this, but like I said, I'm looking for a watch that really competes at the level of the Apple Watch Ultra, which for a lot of people I hear is the one reason why they're sticking with an iPhone because of the watch experience. So let's first talk about the stuff that I like about the Garmin Phoenix 7X. And firstly, it's just the sheer amount of information that you can have on the home screen. Now I've got, of course, the time showing, but I've also got the date, the time the sun sets, my heart rate, the number of steps I've taken today, the battery life. There is just so much information you can store on one home screen here. Now you can also control what information you see on that home screen by using the Garmin Connect app on your phone, where you can also see other designs, other people have created, and you can then download these onto your watch and then change them as you need to. Now, the next one is a really simple but really useful feature, and that is a somewhat proper flashlight, which can be triggered by just double tapping the side button. And it's by far better than just using like the screen, like on an Apple Watch Ultra. Now, the next really great feature came to me as a bit of a surprise when I started using this watch to work out at the gym. Now, I do go to the gym like four times a week. I mostly do weights, so I don't do like outdoor running. I don't go hiking and I'm not a huge just general sports fan. I am just trying to lose a bit of this uh, dad bod. But when I started doing a workout using the Garmin, I saw it was actually counting the number of reps I was doing for each workout. Now, not only that, but you can change the number of reps you were doing by tapping the side buttons, and you can also change the weights that you're using. And then also, also <laughs> impressively, when you go and look at the workout on your phone, it takes a pretty good guess at which like specific exercises you are doing. And then off the back of that, it shows you this sort of body heat map image of which muscles you've been working out, and then like which primary muscles, which secondary muscles. The only issue I found out with this is that if you're doing a lower body workout, something like squats or leg pushes, then it really doesn't do a very good job, of course, because it can't figure out from your wrist movement what you're doing. And then you have to fix this by going back onto your phone where you can then actually specify the types of exercises you are doing. Oh, and one other annoying thing here is that I changed my watch so it works in kilograms, but for some reason the phone is still set to pounds and I can't figure out how to change the phone to be in kilograms as well. So, so when I'm like manually editing my workouts on the phone, I'm having to do this conversion from kilograms to pounds each time. Speaking of too much hassle, charging the battery. Now this is where the Garmin watch absolutely destroys the Apple Watch Ultra. Now I've charged this watch once since I've bought it and it's kind of got to the stage now where I might want to think about charging it. We're down to 38% and that's been what, three, four weeks I think now. But honestly, where I haven't charged it for so long, I don't actually know where the charging cable is right now. Now, like charging the Phoenix using this like proprietary cable. No, I, I legit don't know where the charging cable is. If I can find it, I'm gonna shoot some footage of what the cable looks like, but charging the Phoenix using this like proprietary cable. So unless you know somebody else with a Garmin, then you're pretty stuffed without being able to charge it. Whereas with, you know, say an Apple Watch, loads of people have an Apple Watch. So borrowing a charger is probably a lot easier. But yeah, charge the Garmin once a month versus the Apple Watch, which is like once every day or once every other day or so if you've got the Ultra. Choose your poison. Over to data and complications. Now, the Garmin holds a ton of information. And then by tapping the bottom left button, you can scroll through some of the data. There's the solar intensity, which is a bit of a fun one as it shows you how much time you've actually spent outdoors. You can see I haven't spent much time outdoors at all today. 
I should really fix that. And also, like I said earlier, the watch kind of charges using solar power, but I haven't seen the battery go up whilst outside. So honestly, with like a 30 day battery life, it's not really like that's a concern anyway. Unfortunately, where I don't run outside, it's not really registering anything for like the training status or performance. Apparently you have to like run outside for that to register. I think I have to run like a 5K or a 10K. If I keep scrolling down, it gives you a training readiness, which I actually really like. It shows you how ready you are to go and like train and do another workout. Now I've had this a couple of times where I've done a couple of days in a row of doing workouts. And on that like third day, it basically tells me to rest because my body's too tired. Also, you've got the body battery beneath that as well. If you go past steps and heart rates, body battery. I really like this too. It's a really good indicator of, you know, how much energy you still have left to give that day. So if you do have enough energy to do a run or a workout or anything other than just like collapsing on the sofa once the kids are in bed. And you can also add and remove pretty much anything onto this list. Now I've added the tide times here into the bottom of the list. So I know when like high tide is. And it's one of like the wonderful things about being on the Android ecosystem is that if something isn't there, you can pretty much go out and find it somewhere else on the internet and then like, download it onto the watch. Something else also great with the Garmin has been the sleep tracking. But I'm gonna actually pass this over to a friend of mine, Alex, who I recently discovered is making the same video that I'm making at pretty much the exact same time. So uh, over to you, Alex. Hey Pete, I've gotta say, I'm really happy with the sleep tracking that I'm getting on the Garmin. Since getting the Apple Watch Ultra, I really appreciate how surprisingly comfortable this watch is, even to sleep with. I'd say I sleep with it on like four or five days a week. But one downside for me is that to get the functionality that I need, it really requires me to go into the health app or third party app. I subscribe to Sleep Cycle, which is awesome by the way, and it has a fantastic alarm on it too. But I just much prefer what I get on the Garmin, you know, at a glance as soon as I wake up without having to subscribe to anything extra. I've got to say though, I found the Garmin Epix 2 a lot more comfortable to sleep with than the Phoenix. Cheers Pete, take it easy. Another useful thing that we get on the Garmin, which you don't get on the Apple Watch Ultra, are lots and lots of buttons. <laughs> now, some might think that losing the buttons and making everything like accessible via the touchscreen is just how it should be. That's just like, evolution. But so those of you who do a lot of running will know the difficulty involved in like trying to do something on your watch whilst running. Like with the Garmin, having physical buttons to do all of this solves a lot of the challenges that we get with the Apple Watch Ultra. And speaking of those buttons, even though the Apple Watch Ultra does have like buttons, they're really easy to push. And I find myself accidentally triggering things, even on a couple of occasions, that's even involved calling the emergency services by mistake with my Apple Watch Ultra. Now the Garmin has none of these issues. Like the buttons themselves require like a firm, yet kind of still easy to push force to interact with the watch. But now onto one of the biggest things about the Garmin watch. Like let's talk about accuracy because as far as the whole Garmin versus Apple debate here, the Apple watch is one of the most accurate fitness trackers out there. But is the Garmin any better? Well, like I said, I don't do that many workouts outside of the gym. So I'm going to ask my friend Shervin, who I think wins the award for running with the most smartwatches at any one time. And if anyone knows which watch is the most accurate, It'll be here. Accuracy is very hard to measure because it's going to be dependent on like where you're working out, who you are, and how you're wearing the watch. So like heart rate accuracy is going to be dependent on how tight the watch is on your wrist, what kind of band that you have, your skin color, any tattoos, the temperature of the day, and how well like the optics are able to reflect uh, the light they're sending into your skin and then back into the sensor. So there's a lot of variables there. Um, but I think for the most part, all of these newer watches are pretty good at least good enough where you can kind of get a vague idea. I wouldn't 100% trust it. If you want to do that, get a chest strap. That's the best way. Uh, in terms of like distance and pacing accuracy, I did kind of do a measuring wheel test and I found that like, you know, they're close enough, but you're never going to get 100% accurate information. The Apple Watch track mode is extremely accurate. So when you're in a track, like that's probably the best device to use on there. Whereas if you're out and about in the city, um, both the Garmin and the Apple Watch are relatively close enough to each other where it's like, you get good enough data and they have dual band GPS. So I think that's where you get kind of the best data, especially in cities and places with trees where GPS satellites can be blocked and the data is a little fuzzy. Oh yeah, have you had any experience with other Android watches? Cause this is, I'm, I'm, I've switched over to like Android for my phone. I'm trying to switch the watch and I'm struggling to find like an Apple Watch equivalent. Come back to the dark side, Pete. <laughs> uh, I've tried the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 and 5 Pro and I've tried the Google Pixel. Neither of these have multi-band GPS, so you're not going to get as accurate distance spacing data. So it's just something to keep in mind. Um, they're good smartwatch watches, but when it comes to like fitness tracking, it's good for someone who just kind of works out here and there. But if you're trying to train for something and get decent data, I'd probably get an Apple Watch Ultra or, or a Garmin or a Coros. A uh, Coros. Okay. So in terms of your um, current thoughts on the best smartwatch, what would it be? 
Apple Watch Ultra, hands down. Best fitness watch? Uh, it depends on what sport you're doing. <laughs> running. Outside running. running. Outside running, I'd probably go with the Koros. Awesome. Or the Apple Watch if you kind of need some smart watch features. <laughs> <laughs> but where this watch falls down for me, personally, coming from an Apple Watch Ultra, is in a few key areas. Now, firstly, is that you can't easily set up your watch faces. Probably not a huge issue for most, but it is still fiddly. With the Apple Watch, you can set up a ton of different faces and then easily swipe between them depending on which face you actually like, want to be using. And if you want to add any new faces, you can just head over onto your phone, create them, customize them, and then send them to your watch. Whereas on the Garmin, you have to download a separate app called Garmin Connect, then browse the available watch faces, then download that watch face onto your watch, and then you can't even customize those faces on your phone. You have to customize them on the watch itself, which just to me feels really, really clunky. And then speaking of the apps, to use and customize the Garmin, you have to download the Garmin app, which is called Connect. And then there's a second one called Connect IQ. And then shortly after installing those apps, I actually forgot what the name of the app was actually called. So I searched for Garmin on my phone and nothing comes up. Like that's Probably not an issue after you've used it for a while because of course you'll just think immediately to open the Connect app. But as a new user who's just got the watch, it's really frustrating to search for Garmin who makes the flipping app and it doesn't show in the search results. Maybe that's like an Android thing, I'm not sure, but still really frustrating. But what I can't forgive as a very expensive smartwatch is how bad Garmin Pay is, which is like Garmin's version of Apple Pay. And the biggest reason, at least here in the UK, for it being really bad is it just doesn't support enough cards. So it doesn't work with my American Express cards. It doesn't work with my Barclays cards. And it doesn't even work with my personal cards either, all from three different banks. And I did run into this issue before on Android with either Samsung Pay or Google Pay, one of the two, I can't remember. But I'm not going to keep changing banks to suit the watch that I'm wearing when I have never run into this issue before using like Apple Pay, even on even the most basic Apple Watch SE. And also, if you're an avid music listener, then the Garmin is yet again another really frustrating experience. Now, to listen to Spotify offline on the Garmin, you have to download the music onto the watch itself, which is fine, but the Garmin doesn't have LTE built in, so you can't stream over the internet. And even the process itself of just getting the music stored onto the watch, take a look at the instructions on how to sync Spotify music to the Phoenix 7X. It is crazy how many steps are involved. Do you want to see how many steps are involved in getting Spotify music onto your Apple Watch to listen to offline? Three. There are three steps. And that brings me to just all the remaining missing features from the Garmin watch. And this is where perhaps I'm being a bit unfair here because the Garmin watch isn't a smartwatch. It is a fitness watch with smart features, whereas the Apple watch is a smartwatch just with some really good fitness features. Now, I'm sure I'm gonna get crucified in the comments regardless, but I'm sure that if you are really into your fitness, your hiking, your running, maybe your golf, then the Garmin provides a great option. But as a smartwatch, it is way behind the competition. And that's including things like the Pixel Watch and the Galaxy Watch 2. You have features like Express Transit on the Apple Watch, where you don't even need to touch your watch to pay. You can just tap your watch when you go through like the underground or the tube. There's also navigation on the Apple Watch, which is super simple to ask for directions to somewhere with like easy to use beautiful looking maps to follow. And this is where it kind of boils down to with the Apple Watch, you have basically 80% of an iPhone on your wrist. Like you can make and receive phone calls, respond to emails, text messages, see your notifications, respond to notifications. On the Garmin, one of the things that really frustrates me is with my ring cameras I have around the house. So say my kids are like playing just outside of my house, which constantly sets off the cameras and like buzzes my wrist. With the Apple Watch, I can actually mute the notifications for like 30 minutes or an hour or so directly on the watch. Now on the Garmin watch and actually on any Android Android watch. This isn't really specific to the Garmin, but an Android thing in particular, you have to pick up your phone to mute the notifications. There you go. There's a good example now. Message has just come through from Chris and I can read it, but I cannot respond to it. Now you've also got access to your calendar on your Apple Watch, of course, and of course all the safety features built into the Apple Watch, like crash detection and fall detection. And then there's the whole Apple HomeKit ecosystem okay, thing of being able to control anything around my home just by raising the watch, like telling it to turn lights on or off or open doors or lock doors, when there is not even a basic voice assistant on the Garmin 7X. But of course, the big one here for comparison is fitness. Now the Apple Watch doesn't have much to offer above the Garmin watch in terms of fitness. Now, like I've said, that's where the Garmin really, really stands out. Now I think if you're gonna be someone who goes on a week long hike, then of course, the Garmin is the obvious choice here with its like month long battery life. But there are still a couple of things that to me make the Apple Watch stand out still in terms of fitness. Now, number one, being able to tap your watch on many of the fitness machines, which allows the machine and the watch to like talk together to get more accurate information 
to your watch. And then secondly, it's just the ability to sync pretty much all of this like health information back into Apple's health kit system. I just find like the integration really seamless. It's straightforward. Everything just seems to talk to each other. Like for example, the sleep tracking for my Aura Ring, the workouts I'm doing on my Whoop strap are both reporting back into Apple HomeKit. Whereas on the Garmin, you can do the same thing, but you have to download a third party app called HealthSync and then go through this pretty convoluted process of connecting one app to the other app and then like syncing it and it does it periodically. And then as I try to do that, recently, as you can see here, for some reason, you can't sync steps from the Garmin watch to the Samsung Health app because just Samsung have decided they don't want you to do that anymore. It just it just feels overcomplicated for something that should just work. So if you are looking for a fitness watch with some great smart features, then the Garmin is the obvious choice here. I know it sounds like I've just bagged on the Garmin watch for like the last five minutes, but honestly, I love it. It's a great, great watch. But if you are looking for a smart watch with some great fitness features, then it is the Apple Watch hands down. Now, for most people, you're probably not going to have two watches. So it would be silly to grab a Garmin if you do like one hour a day like I do. And then the other 12 to 18 hours, you like to benefit from like the rest of the smartwatch features the Apple Watch has to offer. So yes, I am going to stick with the Apple Watch Ultra and I'm going to send the Garmin watch back. And well, so it seems my hunt for an Android watch as good as an Apple Watch continues.